Hey, what's up, everybody? This is the K-Man 1971 back with a super special spotlight focusing in on Superman. Um, I figured it would be a good time seeing Action Comics 1000 just dropped this week, celebrating 80 years of the character that kind of got me into comics. Special shout out to Nintendude1229, who kind of requested this kind of a spotlight. So um, it's been a while since I did one of these comic book collection spotlights, so hopefully I'm not too rusty. And uh, you guys can enjoy it out there. So this will be pretty much a culmination of um, anniversary issues, some of my favorite story arcs, um, my all-time favorite creative team, some of my favorite covers, um, and some keys. So, as you know, though, if you're a Superman fan, you're basically collecting Superman because you are a fan, for the most part. <laughs> keys of this character are pretty sparse, unless you go way back to, like, the early Silver Age and Golden Age of comics. But, um, for the most part, for modern Superman comics, there aren't many keys out there to be had. So, if you are collecting this character, my hat's off to you because... You're doing it out of um, pure love. So, um, for me, uh, personally, I, I started collecting comics but before I even knew how to read. My parents would buy them for me. And the Superman movie with Christopher Reeves and Star Wars, the original Star Wars of the 1970s, were obviously big influences on me. So, they, those were kind of um, my gateway comics into, into the hobby. So, um, without any further ado... Uh, Action Comics 1000, <laughs> trying to cut down on the ramble. Um, I went with a um, Michael Allred cover from the 1960s. Uh, just love this cover. It seems to really, like in my opinion, to really encompass a lot of key moments in, in Superman history, especially during that crazy 60s period. So there's number 1000. Number 900. 775, which used to be a key at one point. It's uh, the first appearance of um, the Elite. And I want to say, oh, who else was it? I forget. Action Comics number 700. Um, number 600 from the John Byrne era. I think this was that issue that actually um, topped off his run on, on the titles. Um... Issue 544, which ended up debuting the new look for Brainiac and um, the Luthor battle armor. And issue number 500, which is basically where I, I drop off on any anniversary issues for Action Comics. But wow, thousand issues. Impressive. All right, so for my own personal timeline... Superman number 339. This is the first comic book I remember uh, having in my possession that my parents bought for me. And um, yeah, first Superman book. It's not worth uh, anything, <laughs> but um, that's where it all started. And then I became like, I floated away from Superman, of course, when as I got older and when I was into like the X-Men and Teen Titans, but I ended up falling in love with the character again during this era in the 1980s. Um, the Man of Steel, John Byrne, who was like pretty much the main guy at that time. It was basically him, Frank Miller, and Alan Moore. They were the tops as far as uh, creative went in the industry at that time. So to have John Byrne jump from Marvel and then not only take over Superman, but totally revamp him after Crisis, it was a big deal and much needed. <laughs> so... Um, for the longest time, this was my favorite era on um, on the character and on the franchise in general. And an uh, interesting little side note, actually. I've been uh, watching a lot of videos from um, a, another YouTube channel called Sci-Fi Wire, I believe. And they have a lot of interviews with um, like classic creators like Chris Claremont, Jim Stalin. And I just watched one with John Byrne concerning his um, run on not only his run but his reboot of Superman and he said the one thing that he could do that he didn't do back then if he could do it now was um, not do the run at all he said that it should have been a highlight of his career 
and uh, it was such a, a hassle for him that if he could do it all over again, he would not do the run at all, which was kind of like a real downer way of and ending in a, a rather interesting interview. But I just thought that was interesting in, in a weird way. So, uh, yeah, Superman, Man of Steel, number one. Here's uh, another important point in uh, Superman's history. Um, Superman number 50 from volume two. And this is where he proposes to Lois Lane. It was a big deal back then. Another big deal, Superman number 75, the, the death of Superman. And then there was Superman the Wedding Album. After years and years, um, Superman and Lois Lane ended up getting married. Not the Earth 2 version as, the, as they did back in, I think, like the 1970s. But this is when the, the real mainstream Superman ended up getting married to Lois. Unfortunately, it was kind of like, if I remember correctly, kind of like rushed it and because I believe the Lois and Clark show which I've never actually watched but I believe they were getting married on the show so DC tried to coincide it with the comics and it just felt kind of like rushed and forced for, if I'm remembering things correctly and then years and years later Superman and Lois had a kid and John Kent made his debut in Lois and Clark number one and then, as we all know, ended up taking on the mantle of Superboy in um, Lois and Clark number eight. So quite a bit has gone on with the character since I, I first started reading them way back in the 1970s. All right, moving on. Some of my favorite covers. Superman Rebirth number one. Something about the yellow backdrop on this cover. I, I always thought this one really stuck out to me, too. Um, Superman Rebirth. Well, actually, just Superman number one. What is this, volume three or four? Losing track. I guess it's going to be rebooted again under Bendis. Now, um, I thought I had more favorite covers in there, but they'll, they'll be uh, sporadically throw, put in, uh, like, you'll see them as I go on with the video, I guess. So, um, a little out of order. So, um, back in the early Ognots, Jeff Johns ended up jumping onto the Action Comics title, and at first it was him, Richard Donner, and Adam Kubert, which was, it was good stuff, don't get me wrong. He, later on, he ended up uh, teaming up with, who was Eric Powell, to do a, a very cool Bizarro story, story arc, but when he was joined by Gary Frank... As you know now, the same creative team that's doing a little title called Doomsday Clock. This is my favorite era on the Superman franchise, period. I just think it went to new heights, and all of a sudden, Action Comics was, like, one of my top three reads. Which, you know, as old as I was at that time, to have Superman be, like, that high on my re reading list, that was pretty cool. So, um, a run that I would recommend to anyone that likes, um comic books and likes reading them so here's action comics number 850 and this is when he was teaming up with the legion of superheroes when they were trying to bring the legion back and uh they did to some extent it was just like this was kind of like the high point and after that it just basically fizzled but anyway 858 859 860 861, 862, and 863. Great stuff. As you can see, Gary Frank redesigned um, a lot of the Legionnaires' costumes, and it's just great. Their next major storyline was Brainiac. And um, Jeff Johns ended up kind of doing his magic. At this time, Jeff Johns was kind of like beefing up all of DC's villains, giving them a, a dust off of, like, he, like he has so many times before. And this time it was Brainiac. And um, he did introduce some new concepts to um, the character, which I think have stuck. And uh, 
once again, not to sound repetitive, but great stuff. I mean, after all, this is my favorite run on the character. So 866, 867, 868, 869, which I believe had the, the depth of um, Pa Kent, and 870. So Jeff Johns would continue after this arc for a couple of more issues uh, with some fill-in artists. But um, and while it was good, it would it just kind of um kind of ended abruptly. I think in preparation of uh, the new Fifty Two reboot. So um, but this uh, this run of Jeff Johns and Gary Frank on Action Comics, I would definitely recommend it to to anyone out there. As well as this. So um. I guess for the grand finale, they did a Superman Secret Origin miniseries shortly after their Action Comics run. And um, like a lot of you out there, I'm kind of like done as, as far as Superman's origin goes over and over again. But this was a, a unique take on it. And once again, uh, done by this creative dream team. So um, once again, highly recommended. So here's issue one, two. And yes, there is definitely a, a, a Christopher Reeves uh, Superman era look to this title as as Gary Frank. I mean, I mean, look at that. It's great. Number four, five, and six. So overall, just. A great run. I think it might be like 30 issues altogether. Uh, incredibly cheap. So uh, highly recommended um, high quality stuff on the cheap. You can't go wrong. All right. A couple more classic covers. Of course, Superman number 204, Jim Lee. I had to have at least one Trinity cover in there, and I figured, why not another Jim Lee? Uh, Superman, Batman, or was it Batman, Superman? I think not. At su it was Superman, Batman. Superman, Batman, number 10. Or it says it right there. Classic cover from back in the day. Superman Spectacular, um, number one, 1977. I remember they used to run this book in the, uh, this cover in the house ads back in the day. So uh, picked it up on the cheap. It's only in a VG uh, condition. And I've always dug these kind of covers. The old classic, um, the rocket leaving Krypton as uh, Superman stands in the background. Superman number 300 and Superman World of Krypton number three. So, very cool. Oops. All right. Now for some of my favorite stories featuring the Big Red S. Now, as even though I just said like I was kind of uh, done with Superman origin stories, and that's how I felt at the end of uh, Secret Origin with uh, Jeff Johns and uh, Gary Frank. I'm like, who can't really top that? But this right here is a pretty original take on um, Superman's origin once again, and. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. I originally picked this up because I picked up the variant for issue three, but after I ended up reading it, I'm like, wow, this, this stuff is really good, actually. So um, Superman American Alien, number one, it's a seven-part miniseries. I won't go through showing you all the issues, but I would definitely recommend it to anyone. Green Lantern, Superman, Legend of the Green Flame by Neil Gaiman and various artists. Um... This was originally supposed to be a storyline that ran through Action Comics Weekly, but allegedly some con continuity glitches got in the way, so the story was shelved for a very long time. And uh, But for some reason, they ended up uh, publishing it years later in a prestige format, a uh, square-bound book, like, well, like, it, like this. <laughs> so, um, great stuff. Obviously, Neil Gaiman doing a Superman-Green Lantern team-up with various guest stars from like, um, I, I believe Dead Man guest stars in this and uh, maybe the Blackhawks. But 
great stuff. Pretty original storyline. Superman goes to hell. Um, yeah. <laughs> Another great modern classic from uh, Mark Millar. Superman Red Sun. Basically, what if Superman would have uh, landed in Russia instead of Smallville? One of the best Elseworld stories. One of the best Superman stories out there, period. So here's number one. Two. And three. All awesome covers, too. I would also highly recommend... All-Star Superman from Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly. Um, fantastic stuff. It's like all the elements of Superman thrown into a blender and <laughs> put to the page by Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly. That, that's as, about as good as I can put it. There's a lot of Silver Age nostalgia in here with a, a modern twist, I guess. And um, once again, I, I, I would have to say like a modern classic. And, of course, I'll end off the, the story-driven part of this issue. I mean, this uh, haul or video with a high recommendation to anything that Alan Moore touches when it comes to Superman. So, um, very limited, but once again, highly recommended. So, Superman and Swamp Thing team up in DC Comics Presents number 85. And um, it's always kind of cool whenever Superman and uh, Swamp Thing team up it's usually a pretty cool deal i just for the record um little side note i hate the alan moore look of the redesign of swamp thing i hope that that does not last for long that is just horrendous moving on superman annual number 11 um for the man who has everything uh, another alan moore classic um i guess this comic has been adapted for the old Justice League Unlimited cartoon as well as a, an episode for Supergirl. So very, very uh, classic stuff, once again. And my all-time favorite Superman story, and one that is criminally affordable considering how good it is, and it is Superman, Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow by Alan Moore. Um, and Kurt Swan uh, had heavy George Perez inks on the Superman issue. And I just remember reading this back in the day and it blowing me away. Whoops. There we go. Sorry about that. So once again, very affordable. Uh, Superman issue number 423. Action Comics number 583. And this was basically the end of the basically the Silver Age version of Superman that continued from the 1960s all the way to the mid-80s before the John Byrne reboot and Crisis on um, Infinite Earths went down. So, once again, not to sound repetitive, but a, a classic. All right, and we'll end it off with the keys, all minor keys mostly, but still keys nonetheless. So, um, Superman number 10, the first appearance of the Super Sons. Here is the B cover. I guess this was supposed to come out around the time that Batman vs. Superman came out in the, in the theaters. And here's issue number 11. That continued, uh, that concluded the story arc. Speeding Bullets, Superman Speeding Bullets, another Elseworlds classic. Basically, um, Superman landing in Gotham and having more of like a a Batman-esque origin. Love my cross company crossovers. The Incredible Hulk versus Superman. I mean, come on. You just have to have it. Drawn by uh, Steve Rude in a very Kirby style. Awesome. Another affordable key. Um, Superman the Man of Steel, number 18. The first appearance of Doomsday. Action Comics number 471, sporting this awesome Ho Jose Luis Garcia Lopez um, cover. And this is the first appearance of uh, Syravel? I, I forget her name, but it's that crazy Kryptonian uh, female character from um, the Zack Snyder Man of Steel movie.
Action Comics number 595, and this is the first appearance of the Silver Banshee. Action Comics number 835, and this is the first uh, appearance of Livewire in the main DC Universe. Action Comics number 894, and a lot of people say this is the first appearance of death in the mainstream DC Universe. I disagree, but whatever. It's uh, still a, a minor key, but I do love this David Finch cover. Crazy. Superman Unchained number one. Um, Neil Adams doing Superman Breaking the Chains again. Always a good thing. You'll see this image again <laughs> a couple of times in this video. Can't go wrong with Neil Adams on Superman. So this is Neil Adams. Um, well, Superman, All-Star Superman number one, Neil Adams variant cover. I think one of his better ones. Let me move some of these out of the way. Superman American Alien number three variant of uh, Joelle Jones, I believe her name is. But either way, whew, crazy. Superman Adventures number five, the first appearance of Livewire. Superman Adventures number 21. I think this is just a key based on um, the cover, but really nice. And it, it, it goes uh, nicely with... Um, the Batgirl Adventures number one cover. They kind of, um, they go well if you put them side by side. DC Comics Presents number one. More Jose Luis Garcia Lopez awesomeness. Uh, cover and interiors. And I, what is this? The fourth Superman Flash race, which continues to issue number two, which I, you know, unfortunately I do not have. I used to. One of my all-time favorite comics in my collection, not necessarily because it's a Superman comic, of course, that happens to be drawn by Jim Stalin, but it contains the first appearance of the New Teen Titans. Uh, someday I will have a comic book collection spotlight focusing in just on that um, incredible Marv Wolfman, George Perez run. Um, and more sweet nostalgia. Superman, uh, well, DC Comics presents number 47, Superman and the Masters of the Universe. Um, first appearance of He-Man in comics. We're getting there. Superboy starring the Legion of Superheroes, number 197. And this is the first time that the Legion of Superheroes were, well have their name in the title of a comic. <laughs> so um, eventually they would end up taking over this title from Superboy later on in the 1970s. But you can see the early Dave Cockrum designs, who I guess he's, he, like in older interviews, uh, it, it was said that um, he, some of the designs that went to X, the X-Men franchise were actually designs that he was planning on using on the Legion of Superheroes. So um, cool little factoid. More Neil Adams goodness. Uh, this is a book that I just got not too long ago, probably like last month. Action Comics number 485. Superman Breaking the Chains yet again. Action Comics number 466. Luthor being very um, thrown, thrown down with some child abuse there. Uh, probably my second favorite all-time Neil Adams Superman cover. Superman number 317. Look at that. That is just bad. In a good way. Superman number 240. And we'll top off the Neil Adams goodness with my all-time favorite Superman cover and probably one of my top 10 favorite covers of all time. Um, Superman and number 233, Kryptonite, <laughs> Kryptonite Nevermore, and um, 
love this cover. Nothing screams superhero comics more than, or, or Superman in general, more than this cover. When I think Superman, I think of this Neil Adams cover, who I guess doesn't think that this cover is very impressive, actually. And it is a pretty basic cover, but I just love it, man. Like many of you. Superman number 207. Just a very cool um, Silver Age anniversary issue. Superman number 220. I just liked it because it's a Superman versus Flash cover. And it's from the Silver Age, which is where you have to kind of go <laughs> to, to get any kind of, like, keys. And lastly... We'll end it off with Superman number 167, which I think I ended up getting in either in the beginning of this year or the end of last year. And this is the first time that um, Lex Luthor and Brainiac ever teamed up. And that was kind of like a, a common occurrence by the time that uh, I was collecting comics, the, the, the team up of uh, Luthor and Brainiac. So um, I ended up stumbling onto this, I, like I said, earlier this year. And after I, I could tell by the cover that there was some significance about it. I only paid 20 bucks for it, and it's in, I'd say, probably VF minus condition. Awesome Superman history right there. All right, so let me just push this back a little bit. And we'll end off big. Not necessarily, like, big issues monetary-wise, monetary but literally big issues. So, let me just adjust that. There we go. Superman and the Fantastic Four graphic novel. Um, not expensive at all, but come on. When's the next time you're going to see Superman team up with the Fantastic Four? And it just does feature this incredible Alex Ross wraparound cover. So, that's worth it for the price of admission alone, I think. Moving on. We have Superman versus Shazam. Um, DC, what is this? A collector's edition C-58. <laughs> uh, nice numbering system. But um, really good. And out of all the Superman Shazam throwdowns, uh, I would have to say this one is the best. It's just big... <laughs> big sprawling pages of violence and um I, yeah i would definitely put this up there this yeah well yeah for, for for the time i guess because i'm really torn between this one and uh the all-time classic of uh superman versus shazam and kingdom come all right moving on before i get too sidetracked again superman versus mohammed ali Yes, um, and Superman gets his ass kicked. It's like, well, to no shock, I mean, he was depowered, and you go up against Muhammad Ali. I mean, <laughs> nothing good is going to happen there. <laughs> but um, old-time classic, hokey story, of course, but um, beautiful Neil Adams cover, iconic Neil Adams cover, and um, Neil Adams artwork throughout the, throughout the, the, the issue. And it's a giant size glory. So, great stuff. And then finally, I will end it off with Superman versus The Amazing Spider-Man, a book that I wanted so badly as a little kid. This was one of those books that appeared in house ads, and I had no, and my parents too, had no idea where to purchase this book. Um, I didn't get this until probably six seven years ago probably fine plus condition um it's it's a tough book to find because it's one of those square bound books and it's white i have a little bit of tanning on, on the right hand side but other than that very happy with this book so um yeah that's all i have in uh 80 years congratulations to uh dc comics and uh jerry siegel joe schuster and um the big red s so awesome and hopefully there's 80 more years for the generations to come. So that's all I have. I will be back next week with a giant size comic book haul. Thank you all for watching, liking, subscribing, and uh, take care. Enjoy your weekend. See ya.